In today's world, with all our wonderful technology, it's easy to lose our connection with nature. But actually, nature has massive benefits for physical and mental well-being. In today's episode of The Daily Move, I'm here in this beautiful forest talking to gardener and author Ellen Mary about what those benefits are and how she works with nature to find peace within herself. So today we're going to be doing some forest bathing. Can you tell me what that is and what the benefits are? So forest bathing, in a nutshell, is about walking in a wooded area full of trees and birdsong and wildlife, where you're walking with intention to help your health, so with health and wellness benefits. It's called Shinrin-yoku in Japan, which actually means forest and bath, so hence where the forest bathing comes from. Um, and lots of people say to me, what does, you know, what does that entail? Like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you don't have to wear a swimsuit for a start. It's about walking for your health. It's kind of like med a walking meditation, but being very aware of what's going on around you. It's about absorbing in all of the oils from the trees. They're called uh, phytoncides, which are actually the forest's way of communicating with each other. So the trees are communicating about pests and diseases. So they're like warning each other. But the oils that are emitted are really good for our health. So as we're walking, we're breathing all of that in. It's also about just observing what's around you. So we are a whole human race with nature deficit disorder. We've lost our connection. But when you're forest bathing, you're connecting with everything that's around you. So you're looking at the detail, perhaps in the bark, or you're spotting leaves on the ground. You're engaging all of your senses, so all of the five senses that we know so well. But we also have many other senses as well. So forest bathing really is about being surrounded by trees, not when you're walking the dog, not when you're out with your friends or walking the children, it's just you, perhaps you and a group if you're on a guided forest bathing walk, and just seeing what's around you and being totally engaged with it. Emptying the craziness in our minds that goes on all of the time, turning off technology and just being in the wisdom of the trees. Um, we know, of course, that indigenous peoples all around the world have been forest bathing in some way or another uh, forever. But uh, the Western world has, of course, forgotten all about that. But thankfully, there's been some research, uh, mainly in Japan, but now a little bit more around the world about the benefits of being in the trees. And one thing for me is also tree hugging. So putting your arms around a tree and coming into connection with a tree uh, also has numerous benefits as well, all very, very similar. Uh, and I think a lot about forest bathing is to do with spirituality as well you know we've lost that connection with ourselves and with nature and so that kind of spirituality comes into it when you're walking in the woods it feels kind of magical it's like awe and wonder you know so one thing to remember when you are forest bathing is that it's a reciprocal agreement we've already taken so much from the natural world so when we go forest bathing it's not just about taking from the forest for our wellness you know it's like we're breathing in the oils and um, you know we're touching all of the moss and the leaves and if you can walk bare feet that's even more amazing as well so you know you're grounding yourself but it's also about giving back and remembering that this is a two-way agreement you know don't just take give as well so often on a forest bathing walk you might find something that really stood out to you or called to you like a stone or a leaf or a twig like something that's laying around and then at the end of the session we give that back so a thank you to the forest for allowing us the time and the space to be here you know for our wellness you know we need trees to survive you know lots of people say to me oh you know why do you hug trees or why do you love forest bathing and you know it's because we wouldn't be here without them so we have to remember to give thanks as well. So for me personally, I can find it a little bit awkward to uh, sit or walk and take in nature. How do you get around that awkwardness? 
So I think that because we've become so far apart from the natural world, we've forgotten how to do that. Um, the one thing to remember is that we are nature. So we often say, let's connect with the natural world or let's connect with nature. And that's really important. We need to connect, we need to reconnect. But ultimately, I think it's more about the fact that we are nature. And once you start remembering that, that's the key to getting rid of the awkwardness because you belong in nature, yeah. So if there's other people around you and it's hard to switch off and you're wondering, you know, what to do, I think it's just about pacing yourself. It, like meditation, when you meditate, it can take some time to get into it. So when you're walking amongst nature anywhere, so not just in a wooded environment, but in the park or in your garden, just take some time without expectation. We place so much expectation on ourselves to feel or do or be certain ways. Just walk. Just be yourself, just relax your mind, just look around. And I think when you engage your senses, you're forgetting what else is going on around you. So you kind of lose that awkwardness a little bit. Part of that also is about self-confidence. You know, for anyone who feels awkward doing anything that they want to be doing is remember that this is your time. It doesn't matter what anyone else is thinking or looking or doing, you know, you just do you. One thing I love to do is if I do feel particularly awkward or anxious or nervous about anything is focus on one thing. So if you look at a leaf in the tree and you focus really intently on it and see if you can hear it and it's like everything else just kind of dissipates away and it's just you in this moment. So taking time is the most important thing and practicing it, you know, remembering that you are it, you are nature. A lot of people live in uh, urban spaces where there may not be a lot of greenery. What's your advice to those people who want to connect with nature? There's greenery everywhere. There's greenery in the cracks of the pavement. There's a dandelion that will pop up at the side of the road. If you're in a city, you will see buddleia growing at the sides of the train tracks. And of course, there is less nature in an urban environment, but it is there. And when you seek it and you find it, it's kind of extra special, you know, because you're not expecting it. There was a study done recently that suggested that we've got this thing called plant blindness. They asked people to walk around and say, what could you see? And people answered phones, people, buildings, cars, roads, traffic lights. Nobody said the tree, the clouds, the dandelion, whatever it is, or the fern growing out the side of the wall. So this has been termed plant blindness. Don't be plant blind. Get outside and see what you can find. And that's a really special thing to do. And then you can see how incredibly resilient plants actually are. Um, you know, if you see a tiny little bit of grass growing out the crack of a pavement, but there's no other grass, you think, wow, that bit of grass wanted to live, right? But it just makes you connect better with it. Most urban environments will have some parks, uh, some benches, some kind of trails to walk along, some trees. Go and identify the trees along the side of the road. If you walk to work and you walk past 10 trees, I bet you haven't looked at them and gone, oh, I don't know what tree that is. Identify the tree. So next time you walk by, you know what tree it is. Look out for things. Are there birds flying in the sky? It's not just about being in a wooded environment if you want to connect with nature. There's numerous different ways that you can do it, but you kind of got to go out and seek it and know that it's going to be good for you to do so. How do you directly help others improve their well-being? So after a, a long spell some years ago of being unwell, I discovered being outside in nature, gardening, tending to my herbs in the garden, going for walks in woodland, it made me feel so much better. And I wanted more people to know that, you know, being outside in this free, wonderful natural world that we have can be accessed by anyone. So my kind of goal now, if you like, is to get groups of people together to forest bathe. Like I take people on guided forest bathing walks. This is one of the wonderful woodlands where I take people on walks, where people can just find that connection, you know, that all important connection for wellness again. Um, I also run a nature therapy uh, consultancy called People Plants Wellbeing. Uh, the, gu the guided walks are through that as well, but I also run retreats where we stay in private woodland 
and it's absolutely magical. It's so beautiful and we get, go on forest bathing walks every day or we stargaze in the evenings or we go and look at bats in the night. We're on nature trails, all kinds of different healing modalities but outside amongst the trees so maybe uh, energy healing or reiki in the trees meditation in the trees yoga in the trees because i believe that all of those practices are amplified when you are simply surrounded by the magic of the trees and breathing in all of those wonderful oils so that's what i do it's nature therapy all about just being outside and reconnecting and uh, improving people's lives by means of uh, nature connection so thank you ellen for joining us on the daily move thank you for bringing us this beautiful wooded area and also thank you to the trees mm -hmm. for letting us sit here and have this conversation together they say it's a pleasure <laughs> <laughs>